This morning we're going to continue our series on how to archive data in SQL Server using T-SQL. And we're going to take a brief, brief pause in this video, uh, for this series that is, and keep it brief this morning, but discuss one disclaimer that I see a lot of organizations make as far as a mistake. And that is, if the data that you plan to archive are for a Bayesian analysis, and what I mean by that is data miners, uh, some of them will approach uh, statistical models using Bayesian methods. And archiving those data can be very detrimental. And I'll give you a really quick example of this. Uh, a couple of years ago, and I, and I better disclose this because I, half my audience is Americans, I was uh, looking at data for the 2012 election, and this was before the election, to sit there and, and see if I could use Twitter and uh, some uh, discuss comments as well as a few other things, mining those data methods to predict the election. And so in my Bayesian model, I actually used a lot of other sources as kind of control variables and to compare and contrast, but I was still using primarily social media. And so before the election, if I recall, the day before the election, uh, my data basically predicted that Obama would win by 4.5%. Now, of course, I don't care who wins. I, I don't vote either party. So for the Americans that are watching this, it doesn't matter to me. However, suppose that I had archived all those other data or data from past elections to a point that it was very difficult to access. It would have become, it would have basically become very difficult to compare to past data. And so when we're looking at Bayesian models, um, we need to remember that if we archive these data, if we do it in a way which makes them difficult to access, then it's best not to do that. So going back to kind of the previous video, do these data actually need to be archived? And then in Bayesian models, I would suggest not to. The way that I would handle this problem, especially with SQL Server, is, and it depends on how your studies go, but I would actually have a completely separate database depending on the size of the study um, for a study or let's say research or let's say a medical because in medicine they're going to use a lot of Bayesian models as well. Um, another way to do that is to use a schema based approach and this is going to be for like data. Let me put this in quotes. So for instance um, with the election, let's suppose I'm going to store it in a database and I'm going to have a lot of other stuff in the database as well. Let's just suppose I approach it that way. So I could create a schema um, called election data and that would be specifically tied to election data. Okay. Now one of the things that I found especially with social media is you know, uh, mining people who say, oh, I'm going to vote for this person, that, that is meaningless. The way that I would mine data is for how many times they use the word like uh, pronouns, let me put it that way, like I versus me. People who use the word me are more likely to um, vote a certain way and people who use the word I are more likely to vote a certain way. So I would say like create schema pronouns um, and then I would say election. So this could be direct election data, I should say, direct election data, and um, and this would be pronouns election, or I could say direct data election, and so on and so forth. The way that I approached election data was to have my own database, or to have a database for it. And you'll notice the reason why we're doing this, if this was all stored in um, a database with a bunch of other data, is that we're, by throwing this element on there, we're keeping track of what's related. I would not archive these data in a way that makes them difficult to access if I know upcoming that I'm going to have a study. For instance, elections happen every four years, right? I mean presidential elections, that is. And so why in the world would I archive data if I know four years from now we're going to have another election? So I may archive data in a way that I can easily access it, but be careful because I've seen organizations, especially a previous organization that I worked at, that they use some of these data for Bayesian models and then it becomes difficult to access or other departments use them for Bayesian models, then it becomes difficult to access. If you know there's going to be a huge demand on those data, let's say a couple of years from now, and remember by the way with elections, it's not the year necessarily of the election, 
the demand starts to happen usually the year before the year of the election. So let's say 2012, um, people are starting to be interested in 2011 and 2012. So the next election is 2016, all of a sudden there's going to be a demand for those data in 2015. So the way you archive data, and this will save you a huge amount of time because so many organizations do this wrong, um, is you, you do want to ask, are these data going to be used for any Bayesian models? And if so, I would not approach archiving the data in the way that we generally do with, let's say, stock data or Bitcoin data, which in the future videos, I will be using those as an example because they're excellent for archiving. Um, but any type of Bayesian model data, such as election, and I'm using that as an example here, that should be stored in an approach like that. And the more, let's say, servers that you have, um, or the more databases that you have, you should have those databases set up in a way that keeps track of those data. And yes, it's true, as you get more election data, like as you can see, this was just one method that I looked at was pronouns. Um, I could also look at like the colors of clothes that people choose to wear. For instance, I could um, I could create a table structure called create schema, and I could say clothing color and then election. And uh, and people may say what uh, that that's not a pattern, but again, you'd be surprised what how you can determine a lot about people by like things that they say, the way they see themselves, like the clothes, the colors that they wear, all of that is more related than you would think and yes it could get very large and that's why you know in the long run you may want to have uh, an entire server um, dedicated uh, to all these data or whatnot it depends on your environment how much storage space how many SQL servers you want to have um, but again I would not approach archiving these data especially when you know that there's going to be a cycle where you're going to re reuse them you want these data to be easy easy to access so that you can uh, make predictive models and go from there. So that's a disclosure. Um, the next few videos, we're going to be using stock data. We're going to be using Bitcoin and stock data, I should say, and we're going to be looking at how to archive. It's going to be mostly a time-based approach. Yes, there are geographic ways to archive data in terms of geography instead of time, but we're going to look at time-based because that's the one that usually most people uh, resonate with.